Hello and welcome back to HVAC Shop Talk. My name is Zach Sioda and what I'm looking at right here is a little calculator that I found online that I thought would make a good demonstration on enthalpy because enthalpy is kind of hard to understand and we have dry bulb temperature, we have wet bulb temperature, dew point, relative humidity, but what I always thought of when I thought of enthalpy is how much heat is in the air, combining all the different types, sensible, latent, all built into one. It's enthalpy. That's how I think of it. And thinking of it that way makes us understand a little bit more about how humidity plays a part into total heat content of the air. Because, you know, you live in Las Vegas, and I did this a long time ago, had this conversation live in Las Vegas, and then you live somewhere like Florida or North Carolina or the Southeast United States, and someone might think, hey, Las Vegas is hotter. Is Las Vegas actually hotter than one of those other places? Well, you think of sensible heat, you're probably right. Las Vegas can be 110, 120 degrees, very, very hot, but very, very dry. So what happens with the enthalpy, the total heat, when you add moisture to that? Is Vegas actually hotter in the total heat sense than somewhere like North Carolina? And I can take some examples from weather here and examples from weather there, and we can kind of think about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to this chart right here, and I'm going to put a dry bulb temperature of, let's, let's make it Vegas. Let's make it 115. We'll make it real, real hot. But it's also going to be really, really dry. So relative humidity, it says, is negative 15.1%. So the wet bulb temperature, we're going to make the relative humidity 4%. It's going to be a 66 degree wet bulb. This is all Fahrenheit. So we have a 5% basic relative humidity. Really, 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 really low. So our enthalpy in that situation is 30.79 BTUs per pound. That's the nomenclature that you use. It's BTUs per pound. 30.79. So let's keep that in mind. Okay, now let's go back to North Carolina. Let's go to North Carolina. I'm going to bring the wet bulb temperature down here. So we'll take the dry bulb temperature down to 90 because 90, I think 91 is our design temperature where I'm at. And the humidity is always extremely high, especially in the evening. But let's, let's take it at like 3 p.m. Plenty of times I see humidity of 75%. So let's see what that does when we take it up to 75%. So I'm bringing the wet bulb temperature up. And when we get to 75%, we have a wet bulb temperature of 83, which is really, really high. The enthalpy is 46.91. That's a significant increase over Las Vegas. So more total heat content, but that's a really high relative humidity. So let's step it down. Let's say it's, it's summertime, but we have a 50% relative humidity outside, which is still muggy because it's 90 degrees. Keep it in mind that if you're inside your house, and you have a 50% relative humidity at 75 degrees, whenever the air warms to 90, it's expanding out, so the relative humidity should drop. So if you go outside and you have 90 degrees, but there's enough moisture in the air to bring it up to a 50% relative humidity, that's a lot of moisture. It just has a big space because it's so hot outside. So let's bring it down to 50%. We'll see what it does. So I'm going to lower the wet bulb temperature till we get to close to 50. Here's close to 50. We still have an enthalpy of 50, sorry. We still have an enthalpy of 38.50 BTUs per pound at 50.69% relative humidity, a 75 degree wet bulb, which is this is a nice humid humid time here at 90 degrees. So if that wet bulb remains the same at 75 degrees and evening comes and we have a low of let's say the low gets down to 78 the air is going to be almost completely saturated because our wet bulb temperature is 75. We have an 87.33% relative humidity. The enthalpy still 38.51. 38.51. That is a lot. That is a lot. And it's a lot of, it feels awful, basically. I walk every evening in it. <laughs> We're raising this thing up. And it's funny how this works. Enthalpy has a lot to do with the amount of moisture in the air. Very, very interesting. So now let's think about supply air and return air. Supply air has more relative humidity. It's higher percentage than return air. Why is that? Supply air goes through a system, hits the coil, it cools, moisture comes out of the air. So why is the re relative humidity higher? It's because the space in the air 
it's lower. The volume of the air, because it cools, is tighter, basically. There's less room for water. So even though there's less water in the air, because there's less room, you have less space available. Meaning your relative humidity, even though you have less water, is higher because of the space is tighter. It's basically like you have six people in your family and you live in a 2,000 square foot house, which is it's about what I got here. And then you take your six people and you move into a studio apartment that has two rooms. You have the same amount of people, but your space is a lot tighter. That's what it's like. Even if you were to have one, let's say my son's going to college. We're down to five people, let's say. In the studio apartment, still overall, you have less percentage of free space. So a percentage of people to open area is still higher than in the big house, even though you have less people because there's less space. The same way with supply air. Let's take a look at this. So let's see what happens when we have a dry bulb temperature entering a return in the summertime of, let's say, 75. 75, and we'll say the humidity in the house is 50%. 52.05 is what we come up with here. Our wet bulb temperature would be 63, so says the chart here. 2.56.17, 28.52 BTUs per pound. I'm going to write that down. 28 0.52 BTUs per pound. All right, that's what's going in. So typically you'll see a split when your airflow is perfect in the enthalpy between return and supply of around 6.7, well, I'll say degrees, but 6.7 BTUs per pound in between return and supply. I should say that, shouldn't say degrees. So let's see what happens when we lower the temperature down to 60. And, of course, we have to lower our wet bulb temperature down, too. We lower our wet bulb temperature, and we see the BTUs per pound is down to 23.18 at a 55-degree wet bulb at 60 degrees. Relative humidity is 73.52, so it's higher. So let's see, 23.18. 23.18, we're not quite there, so if I subtract that out, we're still, let's see, 5 point, doing math on the fly. It's hard. We're still just over 5. So if I take off a couple more points of that wet bulb temperature, let's say, and we're down to 21.99, see 21.99 off 28, that's a lot closer. That's We're looking at about 6.52. That's close enough where I think we can use that. So we have 60 degrees dry bulb, 53 degrees wet bulb, a dew point of 47.62, a relative humidity of 63.62%. So the relative humidity went up to 63 see it raised up because there's less space in the air. Our enthalpy is 21.99, and we could really go lower than that to hit that perfect mark. And the perfect mark comes from the capacity formula. So you want to find the capacity of a unit. We can kind of understand why I'm mentioning the 6.7 BTUs per pound. But that's just an example of what would happen as far as relative humidity from return to supply. Our sponsor, NAVAC, is running a promotion from May the 1st all the way till September 30th of this year. And when you purchase a qualifying vacuum pump, you get two free products. You choose two out of the following three. The NHB1 3 8 inch to 1 quarter inch evacuation hose. The NHB2 the 1 half inch to 1 quarter inch evacuation hose, or the NVR1 core remover. So there's two really nice free items every time you get one of the qualifying vacuum pumps. You can find out more at Navac Global, and you can purchase these things at truetechtools.com, but use our Shop Talk discount code if you purchase from TrueTech to save 8%. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that capacity. So if we want to find the BTUs of something... We're going to multiply CFM times delta H, which is enthalpy, delta H, times 4.5. And that number is a constant that is just to signify that we're calculating sensible and latent heat together. So CFM times H times 4.5. We'll use a three-ton system. Nice and In fact, let's make it two and a half. A thousand CFM is going to be easy to work with. So two and a half ton, let's say it's perfectly 400 CFM per ton. Yeah, it's like a unicorn. So it's a unicorn that gets struck by lightning. It's so rare. That also won the lottery. So 1,000 CFM times delta H. So our delta H then in our previous example, if we started out at 28.52 and got down to 21.99, that is going to be 
6.53. It's 6.53. So we're multiplying 1,000 times 6.53 times 4.5. And uh, because I have my phone right here, I can use this as my calculator. And I see my, my son is texting me simultaneously, of course. And uh, what should I do? My son's still awake, so I'm going to say, just be quiet. Just be quiet, man. Okay. Don't ever text me again. So I'm going to take 1,000 and multiply that by our 6.53 times 4.5. So that's 29,385. So we have about 2.5 tons right there. So that kind of steps right in line there. See, 6.53, and I was talking about 6.7. That's how close we were. So let's take that. Let's say 6.7 times, and that was change in enthalpy I'm talking about, 6.7 times 1,000 times 4.5. That's 30,150. So it's actually like 6.67 is the actual perfect one. So you see how it comes out. So if you are troubleshooting a system and you see an enthalpy change of over 6.7, and it's not intentional, meaning you didn't lower the CFM for a purpose like comfort settings or dehumidification. If you see that the CFM is lower than 400, then that enthalpy number will be a little bit higher because you'll have more face time with the coil. The air is going to be moving slower across the coil. The slower the air moves, the more heat will be exchanged. But there is a trade-off between sensible and latent because the slower the air moves across the coil, the lower the suction pressure is going to be, the lower the superheat or just the suction pressure, as in TXV is going to try to keep that superheat up within reason, so the pressure is going to go down in that coil. Then at the other end of the system, you're going to have issues as far as compression ratio. There could be a lot of issues in the system if the airflow goes too low. Freezing is one of the most basic ones we all understand. If the pressure is low, the temperature goes down, the unit freezes. If you have a piston, Let's go back to Las Vegas. If you have a piston in Vegas, your target superheat may be zero or just above zero because it's so dry. TXV is probably golden in Vegas, I would think. I have never been to Las Vegas before, but I would think that because the target superheat is always going to be so close to zero, you are constantly worried about flooding, especially when you had a condenser, not a heat pump that doesn't have an accumulator as a safety right there, right before the compressor. I would really be worried about that sort of thing. Plus, they're going to be running all summer long in Vegas. Okay, guys. that's I want to just go over that stuff right here. Just uh, put a comment down below. What do you think? Is there something I could have done differently? What do you think about the subject matter right here? Is it something that you uh, would like to learn more about? I would love to teach you more about it. I know this sort of thing a little bit. So I could teach you. I could teach you this stuff. Enthalpy is really important to understanding how an HVAC system works because it takes into account all the types of heat that we deal with, not just a sensible heat, which is just one part of the equation. If you only look at sensible heat, you're not going to understand what the system is doing because let's say home inspectors, a lot of times they go in there and say, I want to see this kind of temperature drop. Why do you want to see that number? I want to see 12 to 18 degrees. I've seen that a lot. 12 to 18. That is a huge span right there. If you're at 12, you have to increase by 50% to get to 18. That's a big gap. Why is it 12 or 18? And if a system is supposed to be 18 and is running at 12 and he gives it the thumbs up, isn't that problematic? Because the system could be in the midst of a pretty significant failure, whether it be compressor failure from a lack of compression, it could be a lack of refrigerant in the system. It could be a whole lot of different stuff. Duct issues, duct leakage, a lot of things that kind of get around that sort of philosophy. 12 degrees can be your target temperature split. If the air is saturated with moisture, you can see from the chart here, if the air is saturated, there's a lot of heat in the air that has to be removed. Not just sensible heat. All that moisture is going to try to be drawn out of the air. A significant portion is going to be drawn out of the air. But when you're doing that, it's taking a lot of your capacity and diverting it away from sensible into latent. So you're not going to get that huge split that you would if it was really dry outside. If you're in Vegas, you have an air conditioner, your temperature split, your target might be in the 20s. 
because it's there's no latent heat in the air. It's all sensible. Therefore, you can kind of you can boost your fan up a little bit more sometimes because you're not treating that sensible uh, heat or not treating that latent heat because it ain't there. <laughs> so there's a little bit more freedom as far as the fan and everything, but there's a, other pitfalls like the, the piston issue and stuff like that that'll arise when, when you're in that situation. So that's just a little bit about temperature split. Temperature split is very, very important because it can be a great it can be a great asset when troubleshooting if you're a service tech. It can be a confirmation that what you're doing is correct if you're installing, commissioning, or servicing. And it's a great thing to just to know about. So when you're doing something else, like you're changing a run capacitor and you start up a system and you're measuring temperatures in and out, you can have a rough idea. And you want to be measuring temperatures with a thermometer. And there's plenty of them available that are really cheap. I like finding tools that are cheap so every man can afford them. You know, a lot of us have these target tools out there that we really want that cost millions of dollars, but have something that measures relative humidity or just humidity and sensible temperature. So you can get enthalpy. A lot of them will give you enthalpy right there on the screen, and they're less than 100 bucks. You can get something that tells you what the enthalpy is, but at least you'll know what the relative humidity and sensible temperature is so you can know somewhat what you should expect on the other end. Like if you have 80%... Relative humidity, you know your temperature split is going to be that closer to 12 than it is to 20. But if you have a relative humidity in your return of 40%, then you're going to be closer to 20 or maybe even over 20. So you'll have a rough idea. And if you have a 40% and all of a sudden you're getting out uh, like 12, there might be something else to check right there. Or if you're supposed to be getting 12 and you're getting 20, then your airflow may be really crappy, really, really crappy. Just put your hand over the vent. If it's really blowing hard, you know, you're good to go. If it's the only vent blowing hard, that might be a problem. <laughs> time for a duck booster fan, everybody. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's hardly ever time for a duck booster fan. Hardly ever. I like to let the homeowners wire them in themselves. That's what we should do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. If you're listening to this as a podcast, you can always email me at hvacshoptalk at gmail.com. My name is Zach Ciota. I am the host of the HVAC Shop Talk podcast. I've been hanging around YouTube for a long time. If YouTube was a high school, I would be the guy, the janitor that's been working there for 20 years, pushing the thing, and the kid's going, who's that guy? And he was like, he used to be on here a long time ago with other guys. But now he's he's just... I don't know what he's doing here. That's me, Zach. Good to see you guys, and I will, uh, I'll see you on the next one.